Hi, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to look at an email, what are the steps to, when you're looking at the email, of if it's a really a legitimate email that someone sent you, or maybe it's a phishing attack. Someone trying to lure you to click on a link, download an attachment, open an attachment, an email, and then get you to their website or their landing page they set up for you to try to steal your information. So I'm going to show you step by step on, I'm going to show you example emails here in this video of how we can look at an email and ways you can tell is this a phishing email or is this a legit email coming from the actual company I'm talking with or is it maybe it's a friend, maybe it's a colleague in you know, a company that sent you an email with an attachment saying, hey, here's my new photos from this weekend, uh, click here to check it out. Um, you know, things to look out for because even that sounds, why would he be sending me that in an email? Why would you not just text that to me? Or why can I see that on Facebook? Um, these are just some examples of things that we're going to go over. So 91% of all data breaches happen with a phishing email. I mean, that is, to me, it's crazy. It's a crazy number to think about. And I can't stress this enough. Yourself, your employees, are the, really the first line of defense against any cybercrime. Uh, so please share this with them because a lot of the times I see they just don't have the knowledge. They don't have, know the how to, you know, how to look at an email, how to tell if it's a phishing email, how to tell if it's a legitimate email, and they usually forward off. If they're smart enough, they forward off to their IT department to have them figure that out, which is a good thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but um, sometimes trying to figure that out on your own is definitely helpful. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a background. What phishing is. Phishing is a fraudulent attempt to obtain sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, credit card information uh, by disguising itself as a trustworthy entity in electronic communication such, an, such as an email. I have had also seen this done using social engineering attacks over the phone to try to collect your information as well. Um, it's not, I mean it's mainly email but I have seen um, people getting phone calls saying, hey, your email is compromised, please send me your password, your log information, or uh, maybe your web hosting account's expired and the email is hosted on GoDaddy or another hosting provider, and we need your credit card information to get your hosting provider renewal. I mean, that sounds legitimate, right? Like, oh, no, my website, yeah, I need my website up, and I need my email working, yeah, here's your credit card, you know, no problem, get it renewal, let's get it back online. So you just have to be aware and cautious about those things. What I do right away is hang up or don't respond to that email and you actually Google and research that company, get their direct number, uh, maybe they have a direct support email, uh, but I like talking to someone so I usually Google the company, find out their main contact information, get their phone number, call them up and, and verify if it's a legitimate call or not. Um, so just do your due diligence on that. So here's are some steps on how to handle a suspicious email. First, approach any email with links in that approach with caution. With images, caution. Um, attachments in that email, approach it with caution. Uh, don't right away trust the sender information in the email. Sometimes you have to go in the headers of the email, which I can go into another video in more depth for that. Don't trust offers that seem <laughs> too good to be true, um, especially with anything. Uh, report, uh, report suspicious emails to your IT department or if you have a tech friend in the family, you know, forward it to them and say, hey, is this legitimate? Uh, do not enter any personal information, passwords, finance information into any pop-up windows or anything when you click uh, a link in that email and it's asking for a password or anything like that. Do not enter that. Just go to the direct website. So, for example, if someone's sharing a Dropbox link and it says click here to open it, instead of clicking that, Log in to Dropbox, like go to dropbox.com, log in, and then you'll get a notification that someone's trying to share something with you. So that's how you can get to that. Here's the first example email we can look. So you can see right away things to check for, see the from. Now don't always trust this. Sometimes, like I said, you need to look in the headers, but sometimes it's just plain and simple right there. You can see from online service at citibank.com. Looks legit. But if you see the parentheses, or if you hover over the from, you can see it's actually coming from a second email. Because that is just a masking technique 
um, that the attackers use uh, to actually, it looks like it's sending from a different email, but it's really coming from support at intl.io. And we're like, well, who's that? Well, it's not Citibank, I can tell you that. Um, so that's one thing to look out for in any email. Look at the from right away. The next thing to look for is look at grammar. Look at punctuation. Look at things that kind of caught you off guard. I mean, reason, and then you got these parentheses, access interruption. I mean, just it doesn't make sense. Why would that kind of be there? Um, it just The formatting just doesn't look right. And another error, as you can see in the account summary, see how the summary is kind of almost like an, it's almost like an image like it's merged together um, it's whereas with a r y it's kind of yeah it's just it's just odd looking and you see it again in privacy so Citibank privacy in terms you just see it's a little it doesn't look right something's just a little off um, so there's just some things to look for now if you have a button that's going to take you to a website correct so what you want to do is put your mouse and hover over the button and you can have, uh, there's a thing that's called right click, copy link. And then you can paste that link in a tech, in a notepad document. And you can see that's what I did here. So I right clicked on that button, copy, copy URL. Do not say open URL, do copy URL or copy link, it might say. And then paste that in a notepad document and see what that link is. And in this, you can see, you usually would say citibank.com slash maybe like login or something like of that nature. And here you don't see any of that. You just see a mass URL and you don't even know where that could take you. Um, so a lot of times what I do here is actually go to Virus Total and I'll show you that an example here in a minute um, and paste that link in there and see if it could be a phishing attempt because it will actually tell you if it is or not. Now sometimes it doesn't always detect that so that's why it's always good to take this up with your IT department, send them that link, maybe they can verify it. Um, but yeah, you just have to be very cautious. Here's another example. Um, this is saying, hey, I'm sharing a financial document with you. You know, Click here to open. And, and a lot of people, I tell them, stop, slow down. Slow down, look at the email, see the from. The from actually looks pretty legitimate. If you go to that domain, it actually goes to that website, the government website. Um, and it's Mississippi, so that even makes it more valid. But if you simply just right click copy hyperlink paste that hyperlink into a notepad document like you see that I just displayed on the screen there for you you can see it's going to a SharePoint site but it's a funny URL because it says this gibberish uh, dash my dot SharePoint dot com a lot of people use these SharePoint sites it's a legitimate domain but they're sharing malicious files so that's another thing you have to <laughs> you have to look out for is it might be a legitimate URL, but it's actually linking you to a spammer's or uh, an attacker's uh, SharePoint account that they are trying to share a, a URL link within that document. Um, so yeah, that's it's just very very tricky there because they're actually using and that email to go back to that to touch back up on this that email might have gotten compromised and now they're sending emails out to their entire address list so when you get an email even if it's someone that you are expecting or that you've communicated before in the past their account could have gotten compromised and now the attacker is using their contact list to send out these spam emails to everyone they've contacted with so of course you're going to assume right away hey <clears throat> I've talked to this guy so everything he sends has got to be legitimate right no do not always take that approach. Do your due diligence. <clears throat> check the from. Check the headers of the email. Copy the links of anything that you want to click on. Paste it in a notepad document and see where it's actually going to take you. Um, here's another example. And I see this so much, so much with corporate um, emails that your your mailbox is, uh, is getting full. The quote is getting full. Um, it's being expired because uh, it violated some policy. Um, I see this a lot with corporate accounts. Um, and <laughs> I can tell you one thing. Your IT department is never going to send you an email like this. Always reach out to them and say, hey, I got this funny email. It's saying I violated my, the policy of the company. I'm, I'm just confused because I haven't been doing that. 
you know, what's going on here, and forward them that email, and they're going to say, yeah, that's that's fraud. And you can see I did here, right-click, copy link, paste in a notepad document, and look at this gibberish. I mean, that just looks, yeah. So you can take that, go to virus total, and you can see I pasted that link in there, and it's coming back as one engine detected the URL as it's a malicious phishing email. So, yeah, you just have to be cautious, do your due diligence, and go through that process. So I, some of the websites I use to, you know, check on those URLs, you can see that's the SharePoint one there. Go to virustotal.com slash uh, the link up there. And then there's a second one in case virustotal doesn't usually come up with anything. Uh, transparencyreport.google.com slash safe browsing slash search. You can paste the URL in there and Google has its own virus uh, scanning system with URLs. But like I said, just because you go to these two websites and put in a URL and it says, you know, everything's fine, doesn't mean it's always fine. It just is not in its their database yet. Um, so that's why you just, you have to be cautious. Do your due diligence. If you're getting an email with an attachment, call the person and ask them, hey, did you send me an email with an attachment? It looks a little funny. I just wanted to verify before I actually save it and download it and open it. And most of the times I've seen, no, I haven't sent you anything, especially when you're not expecting anything. Um, so, yeah. Don't become a victim. Here are some tips to remember. First one, and most importantly, slow down. I know life gets crazy, life gets hectic, and you just want to open up emails. You know, this is legitimate, reply to it, you know, whatever. Um, just slow down. Slow down. And just do your due diligence. Make sure the from is really coming from and and if there's any links or downloads or attachments, you know, you can down you can even download an attachment and then upload it to Virus Total and have that check for you. Um, but you just have to be cautious. Uh, delete any emails that request your financial information, usernames, passwords, um, and never reply that information to an email because it's a scam for sure. Um, scammers want you to act first and think later. So that's a it goes right back to my point of slow down before you click on a link, reply to that email. Um, if that email even ever conveys a sense of high pressure or urgency, that to me is, okay, that's definitely, might be fishy. So let's slow down and be suspicious and cautious about it. Uh, be suspicious of any unsolicited message, even if it looks like it's coming from the company you use. Do your own research. Use a search engine like Google to get the real company's site, phone number, maybe email address, and never click on a link since sometimes they can even look like it takes you to the login page when it's really taking to a phishing website to gather your username and password to log in. Hovering over links and buttons, what we discussed early on um, in the email, will show you the actual URL at the, at, when you copy that link and paste it into a notepad document. But a good fake can still land you in the wrong uh, web page you shouldn't be at. So you just have to be careful when you look at those links um, because sometimes they do look legitimate and they might change. I mean, I've seen this before, um, you know, Amazon, and they put, you know, instead of the O, it was a zero. So they were able to purchase that domain name and then slash. So it looked like you were going to log into Amazon.com and they made the whole website look like Amazon, like you were logging into Amazon. So many people fell for it. So you have to be very cautious about that. If, if it's asking you, hey, your credit card expired, uh, you know, you're waiting for a shipment. I've seen a lot of UPS and FedEx uh, fraud emails. You got to be cautious about those and actually go to FedEx.com and log in there and do not click that link because it could be taking you to a phishing or an attacker's website and they dress the website up just look at, <laughs> to look, at, look like uh, FedEx. And I've actually seen it where you get redirected to the website, whatever it might be, FedEx, Amazon, Yahoo, whoever. And it, the site looks legitimate, but that domain name looks a little off. They have you, it, it has you log in, and then they post those credentials that you use on that, on that phishing site, and they post it to the legitimate company website. So it looks like it's, you're getting logged in, but you're basically going to the attacker's website, logging in with your information, and getting redirected to the actual website. So it looks legitimate, like so you don't even notice anything. So you don't report anything because it worked and everything looks. Hey, here's all my information. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so, like I said, even if the URL looks legit, just go to the website. 
Emo hijacking is rampant, even more now due to the COVID-19. Hackers and spammers, social engineers are on the rise and taking over control of people's emails accounts and other communication accounts. It has become rampant. It really has. I've seen corporations that get thousands, up to upwards to five to 10,000 spam emails a day. That's more than tripled in the past couple of months. So it is definitely on the rise. Once they control an email account, they prey on the trust of that person's contact list. So even if you communicate with this person, even on a daily basis, and they send you some kind of weird link or an attachment, do the due diligence. Look through the things that we just went through in this video. Copy the links, paste them in a notepad document, run a virus quick scan on them. You know, just call the person up. Call the person up and say, hey, did you send me this? Just simple things you can do. If you aren't expecting an email with a link or an attachment, then yeah, check with that friend before opening that link, kind of what I just discussed. Beware of any downloads. If you don't know the senders personally and are expecting a file from them, downloading anything is a mistake. So always contact that person by phone before you download anything to confirm that it was really them sending you that file. If you have received an email from a foreign lottery sweepstakes, money from an unknown relative, request a transfer of funds that you may or might have won, or collected from a foreign country, or maybe the United States, maybe the tax, uh, <laughs> the Federal Tax Commission owes you money, and they want to, they want your checking and writing number. Please send it to us so we can send you $2 million. It is guaranteed to be a scam. So just be aware of that. This is not all, but this is just some preventative tips that I've put together. Secure in your computer devices. Install antivirus and malware protection software. Have a good IDS and IPS firewall. And you, like I said, this is mainly for corporate accounts uh, or small businesses. Enable email filters and keep those up to date. Maybe use a third party like Proofpoint is just one to filter out all the bad emails before it even hits your corporate exchange account. Or maybe your Office 365 environment has a great um, email filter system that's already in place. Set your own operating system to automatically update and your smartphone device. If it doesn't automatically update, manually update it. Uh, maybe if you receive a notice on your phone, sometimes the Google Pixels will actually pop and say, hey, you have an update to do. Do the update. You want to make sure all your software is up to date. Some big ISPs had issues where people were spoofing their domain, so it looked like it was coming from this ISP, and they were trying to collect people's emails and password logins, and people were actually falling for it because it looked like it was coming from the actual company, but they were using... Um, spoofing tactics of spoofing their domain name so it looked like it was actually coming from that domain but it was not legitimate it was taking them to a actual phishing uh, landing page again I cannot say enough check every email no matter if you're expecting it or not you check every single one to help protect your environment please share this video let have all your employees maybe watch it it'll just give them a good rundown and how to look out for an actual phishing email maybe it'll give them the knowledge to maybe check the emails on their own to see if it's really a phishing email or maybe it's a legitimate email i'm not saying all emails are phishing but it's doing that due diligence and checking every email one last thing i wanted to say was during these times we all need to be extra cautious since attacks and threats are on the rise Please pass this video on on how to handle suspicious emails and don't forget about spam phone calls asking for personal information. Even if you think it's legit, hang up, call the company directly using the number you can find on different search engines. Um, maybe you save their phone number in your contact list. Call that number directly. Do not trust the person on the other line of that phone like you wouldn't trust them if they sent you an email. Thank you guys.